Khairan, inshallah. Okay, so um, we'll begin as we always do with the uh, Dua Basmala, which I will read out in Arabic, uh, inshallah. Now. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rahman, Ya Hanan, Ya Manan, Ya Rajalal, Ya Rikan, Ya Kudus, Ya Samad, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rizka, Ya Fihi Shay, Ya Hu Sami, Ya Basir, Ya Ahad, Ya Qahar, Ya Wasir, Ya Jabbar, Ya Mutakabir, Ya Allah, Anta Ahad, Wa Lam Yalid, 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 Ya Qabid, Ya Basit, Ya Allah, Wa Allah, Ya Qabid, Wa Ya Basit, Wa Ilahi, Turja'oon, Ya Naaf, Ya Dar, Ya Allah. إنما النجوى من الشيطان ليحزن الذين آمنوا وليس بالضارهم شيئا إلا بإذن الله وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون يا منتقم يا تواب يا الله ربنا وجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وعلينا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم يا رحمة يا رحمن رحمتك واسيت كل شيء يا رحمن أرجو لي رحمتك يا رحمن الرحيمين يا مؤيز يا مذل يا رحمن وتؤيز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير يا مؤن يا مان يا رحمن الله ما في السماوات والأرض إن الله هو الغني الحميد يا أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إلى الله والله هو الغني الحميد يا رزاك يا مقيت يا رحمن من يشفع شفاءة حسنة يكون له نصيب منها ومن يشفع شفاءة سيئة يكون له كفل منها وكان الله على كل شيء مقيتا يا فتاه يا وهاب يا رحمن فعلم ما في قلوبهم فأنزل السكينة عليهم وآثابهم فتا قريبا يا قدوس يا سمد يا ودود قل نازله روح القدس من ربك بالحق ليثبت الذين آمنوا وهدى وبشرى للمسلمين يا أحد يا سمد يا الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد واستغفروا ربكم ثم توبوا إليه إن ربي رحيم ودود وهو الغفور الودود ربنا إنك تحب الأقفة وإنك أفو كريم تحب الأقفة أفوانا يا ربنا يا مولانا يا رحمتنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من قدمنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من ورائنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من فوقنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من تحتنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عن أيماننا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عن شمائلنا نحن أدو إليك على بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا رباه يا رحمن يا الله So we will continue. Um, so we are doing a commentary on Dua Nasiri, which you may have heard about. It's a, it's a very important uh, dua uh, that was written by a great saint uh, in the Maghrib. And it used to be recited in Jama uh, and it uh, 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 brought about a lot of change in the Ummah. Um, so we are going through the meaning of this dua because it has a very comprehensive and condensed uh, summary of our beliefs, our relationship with Allah and with the Prophet and mm -hmm. all those who have followed him. Uh, and so we are on page eight. Um, so I will, I will, but we have just begun mm -hmm. one, one uh, page eight onwards. So the last third of this dua uh, is where after making all of his requests to Allah Azza wa Jalla, he asks Allah to uh, accept and uh, grant his prayer by such and such and such and such. And these are uh, more profound meanings from the uh, Mulk and the Malakut, mostly the Malakut. So we are going through some of them. And we got through the first part of the first verse last week <laughs> mashallah waja'al bi sadin wa bi qafin wa bi noon alfa hijabin min wara'iha yakun so he's saying by sad and qaf and by noon put a thousand veils 
in front of it it meaning here uh, Dawlatul Islam yani without making it political a land where you can live as a true worshipper of God it doesn't have to be a Muslim state per se so uh, we talked about Saad and Qaf and Noon I'm just trying to see if this thing is long enough we'll see now okay so that we talked about the fact that they come from the 14 mystical letters what we call the muqatta'at in the quran so uh so we'll just go through what they are so the first ones we come across are if anyone remembers alif lam mm -hmm. ah, no. alif lam and then me then after that it's alif lam ra no. alif lam ra um anything else you remember hamim hamim no. Alif Lam Mim Saad. Saad comes there and that comes as Alif Lam Mim and then Saad Nam. Others? The most famous no. one? Noon. Noon, yes, we got Noon. Nam. Uh, the, the most famous one? Yasin. Yeah. Yasin. It's two letters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> So yeah, see, 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 most of us forget that Yasin begins with these two mystical letters. Then also mystical letters we have Ta, Ha, Ta, Ta, Ha, and then the longest sequence comes from uh, the Surah before Ta, Ha, Surah Maryam, Surah yeah. Maryam. Yeah. Yeah. which is the sequence, do you remember? So, anyone remember the first sentence of Surah Maryam? Kaf ha ya in sad. Naam, so we have kaf ha we have. Ain comes. Kaf ha ya we have. Ain sad also comes. Uh, sad we have here, right? Then we have a surah called Surah Sad, which we went through in a lot of detail last week. And then we have a surah called Surah Kaf. We didn't have kaf before, did we? No. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So here, let me just count because we have Nun and Alif. Now. So we have totally 14. Half of the alphabet is covered. So that's a lot. And if you go through the number of ayat in the Quran that appear in the surahs that are from the Muqatta'at, 29 surahs totally start have it the muqattat, one of these letters. But if you look at the ayat, almost a half of the Quran is covered by these letters. And then I want to draw your attention to the 36th ayah of the 36th surah, which is a very interesting number. What is the 36th surah? Yasin. 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 And can someone read the 36th ayah? Yasin is 36, 36 now, which starts with Yasin. Yeah, what is the meaning of Muqattat? Muqattat means uh, unexplainable, uh, has different meanings, uh -huh. not clear, unclear. So we call, I say mystical, mystical, mystical now. So, uh, so the first 36 style. Okay, inshallah, that is recorded. This is recorded. I'm seeing from the NIV. No, yes, please. Yeah. Bismillah. Yeah. So, Subhanal Lazi, Alka Zawadi Kullaha, Mimma Tumri Kullaha, Amin Al Fasihi, Mimma La Yalamu. And someone else, can you read the meaning if you have the meaning? Yeah. Glory be to him who created everything in pairs ah. of those near those and of themselves as well, and moreover of the things they do not know. Hmm. So if you if the Arabic is uh, very clear, so the translation is very easy. Subhanallah, glory be to the one, Khalaka, khalaka the, he who cre the creator. Uh, or cre he created al azwaj kullaha 
everything in pairs everything is paired mimma tumbitul ardu whatever you find on the earth wa min anfusihim and what is in your own self uh wa mimma la ya'lamun and what you do not know about so this is one reason we say allah says everything he has created is in pairs except for Oh, himself <laughs> himself this is why we say kul huwa allahu ahad say allah is one that has a very profound meaning so every single thing is paired which is why sometimes some people say when they meet people who may they never maybe they never saw them before in their life when you're traveling somewhere but randomly you'll meet a person and you'll say i know you right somewhere i have met you has that happened to you you have oh, yeah. that experience yes. um we say that is because before you came to the dunya in your time in the in the existence before the dunya which we had a long existence fi jannatul firdaus which we should remember and the whole point of our life is to increase our zikr to such an extent we remember our previous life when you remember that life life here becomes everything makes sense so fear and grief goes away so um in that life you were with certain people right you spent a lot of time with those people because there's one one narration where we talks about being arranged in ranks so you saw that person then so when you see them here you say i know you though you never met never ever not related maybe you don't even speak the language but you will feel in your heart ah uh, that recognition so that's one of the reasons another reason is because you're always paired when you have when you are created you have been created already paired uh so fortunate alhamdulillah those who find their pair in their actual worldly life some people don't really meet the one they were created uh, to be with and they may meet in the in the in the next uh, next uh, existence but so this pairing is a is a is very interesting the more you start observing or looking for pairs you will find in almost everything there's a pair even in the forces magnetism you have positive negative you have uh, everything in creation is paired and 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 the pairing is not limited only to the mulk the realm of physics and chemistry that that pairing goes to the malakut also which is why every action that we take in this world has a reaction sometimes in the unseen world and that that reaction can sometimes affect you later on in your life in this world uh, in a more profound way this is why we are very careful about fulfilling uh, the sharia the sharia is not just a bunch of legal rulings it has cosmological meaning uh, though we are very far from understanding that or bringing that back to uh, back to our consciousness so this aya and it's very interesting it comes at 3636 subhanallah the 36th aya of the 36th surah which is yasin which is a profound surah in the quran allah emphasizes that So in the Quran not only the words the letters used because certain letters are mystical and so there are 14 and these are paired with the other 14 which are non mystical huh? so even that is paired so every letter has a potency in the Quran not 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 any letter is randomly there which is why you have to 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 really Uh, for the quran to open itself to you you have to go in the language it was revealed in because every letter has a uh, meaning hmm. uh and you can come to this meaning at many many levels and not only the letters but also its placement so if you read the quran carefully you will also find every verse has its pair and every surah has its pair because this is what allah says so the one who is able to see that and interpret it will understand the quran in a um very powerful way uh, but allah does not give that knowledge to uh many people 
So we've gone through Sa uh, Saad, we went through Surat al Saad. And interestingly, Surat Saad comes how many times does it come? So we had it once in Alif Lam Mim Saad, we have it in Surat Saad. Then Kafia Ain Saad. This is not long enough. So here, Saad comes three times, Kaf comes, uh, Surat Kaf, and Ayn Seen Kaf again, it comes in one of the Hamim Surahs as the second Ayah. There's one, all of these letters usually start a Surah, a chapter, except for one Surah, I think Surat Shura, where the first sentence is Hamim, the second is Ayn Seen Kaf. So the mystical letters are in two sentences. The other anomaly is Surat Qalam. Noon appears only once. And that also not on its own. It appears as part of the first sentence of Surat Qalam. Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun, which is very odd. Normally they come as on their own, but here it comes as one and it comes uh, to emphasize the meaning of the rest of the sentence, well, kalami by the pen, and by what is written. Mm. So we went through the meaning of Surat Saad last week to summarize. We said it is uh, a surah that emphasizes uh, returning in Abba from, from Tauba, from the story of uh, Sayyidina Dawood and Sayyidina Sulaiman and many, many, many other prophets are mentioned in Surat Saad. In Surat uh, Qaf is very heavy. It was very heavy to read. Where Allah Azza wa Jalla, the whole surah, almost the entire surah is mystical in its meaning. And Allah Azza wa Jalla emphasizes the two angels, uh, their closeness to us. Uh, their diligence in their job, they don't miss anything. Unlike us human beings, you ask somebody to go and shadow somebody. It's not going to be a perfect shadowing, but the angels don't miss a single thing. And Allah Azza also tells us that he is closest to us than our Habbin Walid, this artery, the main artery that gives us life. So that's a very profound uh, surah, surah. Off. And part of the meanings of that surah, when you first read it, it's very uh, uh, portentous and can shake you because it's very heavy. But it is a surah uh, that talks about Allah's hilm from the word of sabr, hilm as in forbearance. Uh, because you know, one of the kindest things a person who is your benefactor and who you are accountable to, one of the kindest things they can do is tell you what they expect and what is going to come. Like if a boss, you know, you say, this is what I want, this is what I've given you, this is what I expect at our next meeting, this is what's going to happen to you. So Allah Azza wa Jalla Surat Qalam, sorry, Surat Qaf, completely laid out. This is what I have done. This is where I put you. This is your state. And this is going to be our meeting. Don't forget, I'm closer to you than you are to yourself. And we are going to meet and you must prepare for when that meeting comes. Uh, I think if each of us uh, take that meeting 100% uh, as true, which we should do obviously, and take it uh, seriously, it is enough for us that we spend the rest of our life preparing for that meeting. Which is why when you take that sincerely, um, you have no time to worry about anybody else or anyone else's, whatever situation. This whole uh, malady we have of gossip and being too concerned about other people's affairs will disappear because you realize one lifetime is not enough to prepare for that meeting that is written written and it is not if it is when no? so uh, so Allah Azza wa Jalla in Surat Qaf and the, which is the 50th 
Surah in the Quran, he emphasizes that this is part of Rabbana's ilm, his forbearance. He doesn't react to whatever us human beings do. Allah's reaction is not always immediate. Sometimes it comes in this world, sometimes later. And many people ask this question, why do bad people go on doing what they are doing? It's and Allah has ilm. Allah is al halim There will come a time when this when everything will be put to right, but this is out of mercy. And it is something we shouldn't be, uh, we should be grateful for, subhanAllah. Now, uh, so taking Surah Qaf seriously uh, helps us realign ourselves and then helps us also uh, 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 approach the Quran in a way that we should be doing. So the entire Surah Qaf is very, very mystical. Now, mm. and then we have uh, Surat Noon, uh, not Surat Noon, Surat Qalam. وَجَعَلْ بِسَادٍ وَبِقَافٍ وَبِنُونَ Right, so Noon, وَالْقَلَمِ وَمَا يَسْتُرُونَ Let's go through that Surah, because we went through the other two last time. We will go through uh, Surat Qalam, which is... Uh, just after Surat Mulk, so the 68th. Hmm. So, can someone read? The hand that they want to read? Can you read? No? Anyone else want to read? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> بأيكم مفتون إن ربك هم إن ربك هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمهتدين فلا تطيئ مكذبين ودولوا ودولوا تبهن ويدهنون فلا تطيئ كل هلا في مهين حمار مشاء بنمين ونا للخير مهتدي أفي أطول بعد ذلك الزنين أن كان دا مال وبنين Mihin <laughs> وَلَا يَسْتَثْنُونَ فَتَّافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَهُوَ نَائِمٌ وَأَصْبَحَ كَسَّرِينَ فَتَنَادَوْا مُسْبِهِينَ أَنِحْدُوا أَلَا حَرْتِكُمْ أَنْتُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ سَارِمِينَ وَأَنْ تَلَكُوا وَهُمْ بِتَخَافَ فَتُونَ أَنْ لَا يَدْخُلَنَّاهُ يَوْمَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِسْكِينَ وَخَدَوْا أَلَى حَرْدٍ قَادِرِينَ فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهَا قَالُوا إِنَّا إِلَى ظَالِمُونَ بل نحن محرومون قال أوسطهم ألو 
Oh, you should. It's good to hear to to um, yeah. These are opportunities to gain ajar. Now. Sixty eight eleven. Now, if you can go from one to thirty. Sixty eight one. Now, one to thirty two. Bismillah. Read in English. In English, just the English now. Reading by the pen and all that they write. Hmm. You are not a madman with regards to blessing of your Lord. Mm. And truly for you, surely is a reward which will never cut off. Mm. And truly you surely are on the character most magnificent. So soon you will see and they will see. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. Which one among you is the one blessed with tribulation? Mm. Truly, your Lord, he is he it is who is all knowing about who has gone astray from his way, and he is it who is all knowing about those who are well guided. So do not obey those who are the believer. Uh, believer, yes, they would want you. They won't want if you would compromise towards them so that they too may compromise. And do not obey any such who is proposing what's worthless. I mm. slanderous robber, greater mm. of all gossip, mm. withholder of good, transgressor, sinful. Overreaching and beyond all the neighbors. He is all this because he has wealth and children. When our signs are related unto him, he says the tales of the ancients. Soon we shall brand him in the news. Truly, we tried them. As we tried those owners of the God when they vowed that they would surely harvest it in the morning. Mm -hmm. 18, 68, 18. And they did not make any ex exception by saying if Allah wills. Mm -hmm. They said that from your Lord, they said it while they were sleeping, but the morning it was like a completely harvested. So they called on one another in the morning that do go in the morning early to your crops if you need you are going to harvest. So they departed while they whispered to one another. But surely that no needy one enter it in your enter it on you today. Mm. And they went forth in the early morning with a youthful dress, thinking they would have the power over their crop. But when they saw it, they said, We indeed most certainly have lost our way. And indeed we are the ones. Barefoot mm. of our crop. The righteous among them said, Did I not tell you? Why do you not glorify Allah? They said, Glory be unto our Lord. Truly, we have been of those who wronged 
their own soul. Then they turned to one another, blaming one another. They mm -hmm. said, they are to us, we indeed your transgressors. Perhaps our Lord may give us a replacement, one better than we truly we turn back to our Lord in hope. Yeah. So Surat Qalam, Allah Azza wa Jalla starts by reassuring the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, where he says, uh, "Ma anta the second ayah, Ma anta bi ni'amati Rabbika bi majnoon. You are not a madman by Allah's blessing, because this is one of the first things anyone who calls people back to truth, because we say Allah is al-Haq, is truth. The first things." We, they will hear is, you're crazy. Modern day term, you're crazy, you have a nut loose. What are you talking about? Right? Anyone who does this, first thing they will hear. And the Prophet ﷺ heard it firstly from those most dear to him, his own family. Right? So this is not a new thing. It is something the people from the first have faced, people till the end will face. But to have Allah say, you are not a madman. Allah's reassurance is enough. Huh? Uh, that is a great, great, great gift from Allah. And truly for you, surely is a reward which will never be cut off. So Allah's barakah is always going to keep coming upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we say, some of us interpret this to say it doesn't end with his death. For his ruh, which doesn't, has no end, the ruh, none of our ruh has any end. Our body is going to decay. And the body will be given back to us when we come into a, when we go through the barzakh and come into the next life, we will get a new body. Depending on how we are inside, that body will look on the outside. So we say every, every human being has an internal appearance and an external appearance. So you may look very beautiful and very handsome and very well put together on the outside, but you may be a beast inside. Allah Azza doesn't see your external he sees what's inside in the hereafter things get reversed what is inside is what you will see on the outside so we also should train ourselves uh, by purifying our heart which we do with constant wicked that when we meet people we are not uh, in uh, we are not we can see through the external and then you begin to see what's inside a human being uh, when you begin to see that, it's very easy for you to know who to associate with and who to stay away from. And this is something Allah will give you the more you do zikr because it is a uh, knowledge and a barakah from Allah as well, right? So we say the ruh, your ruh, and then talk, um, the ruh, your ruh, your spirit doesn't age, doesn't die, right? Which is why what you remember your memories as a child. You don't think, oh, that was little me. You think that was me. Right? No matter how old you grow, you say, oh, I was like this. Not, oh, the child, Sarah and so was like this. So your ruh is what? Is the is, the, is Allah's breath, as a virgin. The ruh doesn't age and doesn't die. That ruh is eternal because it is from Allah. And Allah is eternal. So it is from his um, essence, which is a great... Uh, treasure all of us carry inside which we should uh, cultivate like we look after our body and develop it so it's stronger for us and works for us we must develop our ruh because generally the ruh is starving we don't give it what it requires for it to fly it requires dhikr of Allah that's what gives the ruh strength hmm? so we say the ruh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is now dissociated yani that ruh hasn't died. So Allah says, for you is a reward which will never be cut off. So that ruh of Muhammad is still being blessed, conti continuously being blessed. So uh, this is why we don't forget Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, as Muslims, and we know when we need help, uh, many Muslims have been blessed to see him in their dreams. And his is the only figure the shaitan cannot take. And then he, he will come to help. When you are in need because he loves us more than our parents. So the Sahaba, anhum, they used to often, whenever they saw him, they'll make this spontaneous, it'll just come out of their mouths and say, Hada kabi wa umi ya Rasulullah. I say, I sacrificed my mother and my father for you, Ya Rasulullah. 
So obviously to sacrifice your parents whom you love more than yourself. Uh, so they love him more than their own parents. And the Prophet himself والسلام, told us, none of you will truly attain faith until I am more beloved to you than your obviously your wealth, your possessions, your parents and yourself. So that's a profound hadith. He is not a man who will just go saying these things. So he understands reality and creation in a way that he is trying to teach us. Because he wants our ruh to connect to his ruh. Right? And we can read later some ayat, the Quran and Karim, uh, verses in the Quran where Allah talks about uh, uh, human bonds and what the meaning of those bonds are. Because sometimes those bonds can become if you don't understand them in the right way, they can be very difficult for us to overcome in order to see Allah Azza wa Jal. This is one of the most difficult things. SubhanAllah. The other second difficult thing is knowledge actually. Sometimes when you have a lot of knowledge, it's very hard to see Allah. You have to put your knowledge and go to Allah with your heart. To go to Allah with your heart, it must be unattached unencumbered by uh, attachments. I don't believe in detachment. I think we have to have healthy attachments. The meaning of that is that you attach to anything and anyone through, by, for, from Allah. So that makes it uh, healthy because it is through the divine uh, blessing. Hmm? Um, so Allah says, and truly for you surely is a reward which will never be cut off. And truly, you are surely on a character most magnificent. You are on a magnificent character. This is the one God saying, I have, this is, I mean, subhanallah, what reassurance, no? When you have Allah saying this to you, no matter what people are saying. So we say, and he, this is a statement that the character of Muhammad, a great character. He, this is not given to any other uh, human being. And he says, and soon you will see and they will see which one among you has is going to have tribulation. And then Allah says, truly your Lord, he is the one who knows who has gone astray and he is the one who knows who have been well guided. And then he says, do not obey those who are the beliars, meaning those who tell lies. And they said they would want if you could compromise towards them so that they too may compromise. This is Allah is the master of psychology, obviously. He created a psyche. So he says, be careful. If you bend a little bit towards those who are liars, you will get caught in this circle of you too must start to compromise. Hmm? And do not obey any such who is profuse in oaths, worthless, who swears a lot. Right, who has foul language on their lips. Slanderous, propagator of foul gossip. Gossiping, slandering, speaking bad behind somebody's back. Gossiping, just spreading unnecessary news. Both are horrible. They are considered major sins. So if you gossip is such a major sin, you have to do a whole heap of good deeds to wipe it off. So we have to be very careful about our tongues. Slander, of course, everyone understands. Slander is to say something bad about someone behind their back. Gossiping is just unnecessarily talking about this and that. Allah does not like it, as a Jalla. And he says, beware of this. Withhold of the good, transgressor, sinful, overreaching and beyond all that ignominious, meaning, <laughs> overreaching meaning really thinking too much of himself or herself. Ignominious and he doesn't know anything either. So subhanallah, this is a masterful depiction of character. And he says, Allah says, does he think of himself in such a great way because he has wealth and children? And uh, we have all met people and may Allah protect us from being people like this. Hmm? So he says, when our signs are related on him, he says, oh, these are paliakadar. <laughs> Tales of the ancients. You've heard that, huh? Old, old tales. Soon we shall brand him on the nose. Truly we tried them as we... So here, uh, 
this is a bit of what is internal being manifested externally. So the branding has already taken place in, inside. Allah says soon that will become apparent on the outside. But as I said, everything has an external and an internal image. Truly we tried them as we tried the owners of the garden. Then they vowed that they would surely harvest it in the morning. So this is the key story. There are two key stories in this surah. Like there were two key stories in surah Saad, right? And then surah Half was completely mystical. There are two key stories in this surah. Surah, this is the first one. There were owners of a garden, of a big garden, and they wanted to harvest their, and they have a magnificent harvest ready to, to, be, to be harvested, and they wanted to do it in the morning. And they said to each other, hmm, uh, they would surely harvest it in the morning. But they didn't say, if Allah wills. So meaning, by we as, as we, we should never forget that every single thing that happens and comes to us is by Allah's will. Allah is emphasizing that. It is not just, I didn't say, inshallah. It's that state of heart. You don't forget that, oh, you think I have done this and this and this, I should get this. No. We don't understand cause and effect in that way. We say, no, I am doing this and this and this because Allah is facilitating and blessing me to carry out my intention. But it is up to Allah whether he gives or he doesn't give. We don't forget that, that because Allah is the owner of everything. Hmm. Uh, so when they were sleeping, Allah sent his messenger from the Malakut and the harvest was cut off. Right? And in the morning, it was like it was completely harvested. And so they called to each other in the morning. Let's go very early. Right? All of this, this gang. So we want to harvest it and we want to make sure that nobody who is poor sees us doing this. Why? Because they don't want to feel like they must distribute it to the poor. So here again we see Allah knows this is going to be what, what they are, Allah Azza wa Jalla already knows this is what they are intending to do. Right? So he already knows and in a sense this is in a sense he has prevented them from engaging in a very big sin. Because we say if Allah loves you, he will stop you from doing wrong. So many of us, when we see people who are very bad, getting more and more strong, we ask this question, why isn't God doing anything? And we say, actually, no, this dunya, Allah has said, dunya mata, dunya is a fleeting, fleeting, it's a dunya imtihan, meaning the dunya is a place for testing. You're going to be tested by good. How do you respond? Will you be grateful or by bad? How will you respond? Will you be patient? This is dunya. It's a very short period. And then our, we, our soul goes back to where it was meant to be. Um, and in the dunya, those people who Allah loves, even if they try to go wrong, he will stop. That's a sign of Allah's love. If he is not, and you see somebody ex exceeding and becoming strong and strong and strong and they are evil, stay away from them. <laughs> They are in a very dangerous position. That means Allah doesn't love them enough to stop them. Hmm? Hmm. Subhanallah. So then he says, so they call to one another in the morning, that do go in the morning early. And, uh, and they departed while they whispered to each other, surely let no needy one enter it on you today. And you can just imagine this picture, right? They're going saying, don't let anybody know it's a, Ravana paints a story very nicely. So they went forth early in the morning with a youthful zest, full of energy. We are going to get this all for ourselves. We are not going to share it with anyone. Thinking they have the power over their crop. Mm -hmm. But when they saw it, immediately they saw it, they realized we have, we have made a mistake. Mm -hmm. We indeed most certainly have lost our way. They realized we have not been well guided. We have lost our way. So that means they had Iman. Right? They knew of Allah and how things work. They lost their way. So Rabbana stopped them from doing something very bad. 
And he said, Bal nahnu mahrumun. And indeed, we are the ones who have been uh, bereft. Yani, we are the ones who have lost. And so one righteous person amongst them said, Did I not tell you? Why don't you glorify Allah? Alam akun lakum laula tusabbihun. And what do you mean by glorifying Allah? Do you give Allah share? What is Allah share? Feeding the poor. That is something that, that is how we glorify Allah in this case, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, glory be unto our Lord. So immediately, Kalu subhana rabbina, immediately. Kalu, they said, subhana rabbina. We have indeed been of those who wrong their own souls. Right? So that was very good. Then what did they do? فَأَقْبَلَ بَعَدُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعَدٍ يَتَلَاهُمْ Then they turned to one another, blaming one another. So this is again human nature. We don't stop there. We say, oh, you made me do it. <laughs> Subhanallah. Allah is teaching us about ourselves and how we behave. I think we can all relate to being in experiences like this. The next time you are in such an experience, remember this surah. Allah is telling you, this is how you human beings, you behave. And then they realize, oh my gosh, <laughs> we have done it again. قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا ضَعْطَائِنْ So, oh my gosh, woe unto us, we indeed are transgressors. Oh no, yeah, we've slipped into that again. Hmm. And look at the hope they have in Allah. So they know Allah very well because then they say, perhaps our Lord may give us in replacement one better than it. Truly we turn back to our Lord in hope. You see? Subhanallah. So as soon as they correct themselves, Subhana Rabbina, Subhanallah, Allah will rectify. This is how, this is the kindness of the beloved. You have to just make that response sincerely. I did something wrong. Astaghfirullah, Subhana. And Allah will immediately give it back. So this is the hope they have. They know Allah very well. So even those who know, make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, you... Rectify yourself. Hmm. And Allah says, such is the punishment in the life of this world, but the punishment in the life of the hereafter surely is greater if only they do know. So what is Allah Azza wa Jalla doing? By punishing them in this world, or making a big lesson for them, he's stopping them from continuing in that sin so that then the rectification has to happen in the next life. So this is why we say, if you have anything outstanding, any issues you need to fix, uh, do it now before the time is um, before the time is late. Because in the Malakut or, or the Baruzak, which we are going into, uh, things get very complicated to fix. They get very difficult. And in the hereafter, things become absolute. So the world of the dunya is the world of mixture. You all experience it, happy with sad, uh, joy with, you know, sorrow, ease with hardship. Sometimes we have a beautiful day and we wish it would be like that forever. Next day we have some hard, some problem to sort out. This is the state of the dunya. The dunya is always a place of mixture. The state of the akhira is no mixing. Pure happiness, pure sadness. So it's easier to put things right here than try to put it right there. Yeah. So actually, though we complain a lot about the fact that everything is mixed here, it's actually, a, in a sense, a mercy. Uh, uh, it allows us to understand Allah better, which is one of the purpose we are here, actually, is to understand Allah better. Had he kept us in Jannah all the time, we wouldn't know ourselves. If we don't know ourselves, we won't know Allah in a deeper way. So when we go back, now we know Allah in a deeper way after this experience of being in the dunya. Uh, and it is a rahma that things are mixed here. So we can understand more about what we are going to, when we go back to Jannah, we'll appreciate it a lot more. Uh, SubhanAllah. Uh, Subhanallah, then Allah says, Truly for those who safeguard their own souls are gardens of the bliss in the presence of their Lord. Uh, and Allah says, Are we going to make those who submit themselves to Allah like the evildoers? Afa, Naja'alul Muslimina, 
practical mujrini. So notice here the people of the garden, though they did wrong, in the end they sub their response was to submit, right? They realized we did something wrong. So this is the, the meaning of being a Muslim is submission. Mm. And then Allah says, Ma lakum, kayfa tahkumun? What is wrong with you? How are you thinking? Subhanallah. Hmm? So it's like your parent talking to you. What? What's wrong with you? <laughs> then he says, Am lakum kitabun fihi tadrusun? Do you have a book that you study that says something else? Inna lakum fihi lama takhayyarun? Is it there something else written about how creation works? Am lakum aymanun alayna baliyatun ila yawm al-qiyamati? Inna lakum lana tahkumun. Or are we under any obligation to you by virtue of a binding oath till the day of resurrection that truly for, the, for you there is whatever you decide? Subhanallah. Can't say what can you say to that. Allah says, have I made a promise to you that you're going to get what you decide? Subhanallah. Salhum ayyuhum bidhalika za'im. Ask them which of them will stand as a guarantor for that. Or do they have ones that are partners with Allah? Then let them bring their partners if they are indeed truthful. And he says, the day when the veil from Allah's radiance, Saq, will be removed and they will be called to the prostration, but they will not be able to do so. That's a very terrible sadness. When you finally see the beauty of your Lord, and that beauty is a... Is a dazzling beauty that takes away everything else and you all you feel like doing is you want to be in sujood and Rabbana won't allow that. That's a terrible sadness. Mm -hmm. With sights cast down, overwhelmed by humiliation and in they indeed used to be called to the prostration while they were at peace. It is in this dunya. So leave me alone with such a one who belies, says the story is a lie, we will lead them on from stage to stage from whence they know not. Mm -hmm. So this is why you see most people who are in transgression will go from worse to worse to worse to worse. Allah says we will lead you on. Because Allah says you leave me alone with the one I created. He's our maula. He's our guardian more than our parents. Owns us. Let him, he will do as he pleases with his creation. Mm -hmm. Now, I give them respite for a while. Truly, my stratagem is firm. Or is it that you ask them for a fee so that they are overburdened with debt? Because none of the prophets, alayhum salam, ever asked for anything in reward for what they did. They were called upon to a great task. They sacrificed everything in its path. And they were mocked and ridiculed and lost everything. But they asked for no reward. From the people, none. They say, my reward is from Allah. Or is it that the unseen is in their disposition so that they can write? So Allah is asking, Am aindahum al ghaibu fahum yaktubun? This is a. So Allah says, Can they tap into the ghaib, the unseen, the malakut, and the realms after that so that they can write? So can, can they change qadr? That's what Allah is saying, right? Uh, or is it that the unseen is in, uh, that they can write? <sighs> uh, so we'll read the last one. Um, and someone should, else should read it because we're coming to the second story. So it's better someone else reads it. Do you read the last, uh, last uh, one, two, three, four, five ayat from 48? <coughs> 48? 40, no, no, no. Ayat 48. <laughs> Kasaibu is Nada Wahua Makzum. Lovla and Tadar Kahu, Namatam Rabbi, La Nukze Abil Azwa, La Wai, Oh Makzum. Pashtabahu Rabbu, Rajala Homan Salhi. In Yakadu Lazina Kafaru, the youth, the Puna Kabi of Salihim, Lama Samiu, Zikr, the Yakulu in the Hulu Muslim. Omaho Illa. Mm, subhanallah. Can you read the English? Yeah. From 48, the English. 
but obey patiently for the wise decision of your Lord, and do not be like the companion of the fish and the cord while he was in distress. Had not the grace from your Lord caught up with him, he would surely be cast on a narrow shore while he was in a state of unworthy reproof. Mm -hmm. But the Lord raised him up and made him one among the righteous. And those who disbelieve merely trip you down with their sights when they hear the remembrance and they say, Truly, he is surely a madman. But it is nothing except a remembrance of the words. Mm -hmm. So, Subhanallah, this is the second story in Surah uh, Qalam, the one we end with. Therefore, wait patiently for the wise decision of your Lord, and do not be like the companion of the fish when he called while he was in distress. Does anyone know who is the companion of the fish? Yunus. Ah, Sayyidina Yunus, alayhi salam. Jo uh, Jonah, peace be upon him, Sayyidina Yunus, alayhi salam. Uh, so to refresh our memories, Sayyidina Yunus Islam was the prophet uh, sent to the, the city of uh, Nineveh, which is in present-day Iraq. He uh, was a very big, strong man. Um, and he had the task of bringing the people back to remembering who their Lord was and worshipping Allah. And he, as all prophets, uh, salam, faced a lot of trouble and difficulty and he got very impatient to say in Yunus and he left that town and he said I, I can't I'm just getting away from here this is too much and he ran away uh, and he got into the on a boat that was carrying going far away and then on a ship and then the ship got caught in a storm and it so happened that the people of the storm there they thought the sea is angry so we need to appease the sea and to appease the sea, we must throw somebody into the sea. And they, so they cast drew lots as who's going to go overboard. It was Sayyidina Yunus. So they threw him over and then the whale swallowed him. Right. And this is where Allah says he was in darkness upon darkness upon darkness. In other parts of the Quran, this story comes. Very beautiful story. Darkness meaning I'm in the belly of the whale, inside, in, in the depths of the ocean, darkness and even if I was to get out of this, there's a storm outside, right? I can't see the light. There's no sun. Meaning I'm, I'm. What did Sayyidina Yunus say? He made this very powerful duha. He said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu What does he do? Same thing the people of the garden do. La ilaha, there's no God but you. Anta, la ilaha illa anta, there is no God but you. Subhanaka, glory be to you. The same thing that the people of the gardens. Subhana Rabbina, we glorify you. Subhanaka la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimin. Verily I oppressed myself. How did I oppress myself? By relying on or by becoming impatient in this case. Impatient is an oppression we put upon the ruh. Our spirit is Allah says, verily the human being is forgetful and hasty. He says that in the Quran everywhere. You're forgetful and you're hasty. It's like our mothers telling us, you're like this and you're like this. Allah Azawajal knows the human being. Forgetful and hasty. So don't be that. Don't forget. If the more you remember me, the easier your life will become. And don't be hasty. Don't do anything in haste. It's not going to work out well. Always take your time. Think about it, finish it, then move on to something else. When you're hasty, shaitan can come and creep in very easily because you're not, you're, you know, it's not good. Uh, so he was hasty, Sayyidina Yunus. He got impatient, was hasty, said, I can't do this, ran away. And he said, then he realized, no, it is not me who is going to convert these people. Allah will convert these people. Allah is testing me. Will I do what he has commanded me to do? Right? Same thing the people of the garden. Same mistake. Right? This harvest is not because we, we planted and we weeded and we seeded and we made this grow. Oh, it's ours. No. Right? 
this is coming back to what we, we spoke about in the beginning of the dua who is Allah who are we and how does creation take place in every moment Allah breaks all of creation recreates it this is what we mean by al qayyum the one who sustains because if he were to say he is not sustaining us now he has made us left us behind this room talking of our own volition that's a problem la ilaha illallah is broken that's shirk that's making a partner with allah no we are speaking and we're doing all of this because allah is enabling us to carry out what we intend to do hmm? every so when you start working on your zikr especially in the times allah recommends which is before the setting of the sun and before it's rising if you become a person very strong in your zikr he will remove a veil and there are others who have witnessed this you will see that you will see how he breaks creation and puts it together he will shatter you into a billion pieces and he will put you together in an instant there are people who have experienced this these things have to be tested they cannot be it doesn't make any sense you'll say i'm crazy right same thing right who is this madman so same same response same problem same response la ilaha illa subhanaka we glorify you and immediately what happened allah accepted that prayer the veil came to the show he spit him out and and allah caused i mean you can imagine his state with all these digestive juices probably dissolving his skin he's on the beach now Allah caused a plant, a goat, a very healing goat to grow over him, that healed him. And he went back to Nineveh. Now he has made his repentance. He went back to Nineveh, said the Nayunus. When he went there, what did he find? All the people had become Muslim without him doing anything. And Allah is teaching him, you're not doing it. I am doing it. Don't think so much of yourself. Right? So when you take up a task to, I must achieve this, do not rely on yourself. That is a fallacy. Many people go astray by that. Right? Uh, you do it for Allah as a way to show your love for Him. Because when you love somebody, you want to do as much as you can to be with them. This is the state of being a lover. Right? Anything that will please you, I'll do it. I don't want a reward. I don't want to say, I have done this. No. It just makes me happy to, to make you happy. I don't want to say oh, I've achieved this. I have bought roses. I'm going giving chocolate. <laughs> it doesn't work, right? It's for you to. It's not about I need to feel good about myself that I am such and such. No, this is a state of truly loving. No, if you accept it, I am happy. Same thing. So when you start a task, don't think I am going to achieve so and so. You will go astray. That's very difficult. Uh, arrogance will creep in. You do it because Allah, if you will. You will make me complete it. If not, Khair and someone else will do it. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he never completed his mission. Allah took his life when he was in the desert. He took the children of Israel out of Egypt, but he never got took them into a form of their own. So it's up to Allah what he does. So this was a lesson to Sayyidina Yunus. He comes back to Nainama, everyone has become Muslim. And subhanAllah, this is actually one of the few um, prophet stories where there was a, yani, the people were saved. And subhanAllah, so it's a nice story. So he says, Allah says, don't be like the companion of the fish. This is an endearing way of speaking about Sayyidina Yunus, huh? the companion of the fish. Uh, had not a grace from your Lord caught up with him, he would surely be cast on the arid shore in a state of unworthy of reproof. But then your Lord raised him up and made him one among the righteous. And those who did, and then so Allah is mentioning that story. So again, when we feel, and Allah is teaching us, when you feel that your heart has strayed into this realm of, oh, I'm going to achieve it. Hmm? How should we respond? With subhanAllah. So we understand Allah is telling us, you just say those words. You will immediately find your heart will become... I am back at peace and I am calm. So when you have a task and you're undertaking it and you get too caught up in it, that you think, I'm going to get this done. Subhanallah. 
right? Because you'll get it done, but you're losing that closeness with the beloved. So the one who truly loves values the closeness more than the task. And it's very interesting, the word for human being in Arabic, insan. The Arabic, everything has a root word, which is why the Arabic language, we say, is not a natural language. Meaning, if you study all languages, they are very organic. Arabic is not organic at all. It is mathematically precise. There are rules. You have to follow the rules. So societies don't come up with rules and say we are going to make a language and it has to follow rules. Language evolves organically. Arabic is not. So in Arabic, every word can go back to a root word. And it's very interesting. The root generally has three sounds. And from those, if you know the root, you can derive a whole sphere of meaning. So the, the root of insan, actually, we don't know the real root, but it goes back to two possible roots. Uh, one root is uh, nisyan, which means to be forgetful. The second root is uns. Uns means intimacy. So it is up to you to choose whether you want to be in a state of forgetfulness or in a state of intimacy with the beloved, and which is by those who taste intimacy with the beloved, then that whole concern about outcome, that's gone, right? So, no, all I want in all my efforts, my worship, my striving is to be close to you. So this is, this is how may Allah bless us to be. And then he says, Rabbana finishes by saying, and those who disbelieve, right, then it's Isha, so that's okay. Some calm. So uh, Rabbana says, and those who disbelieve nearly trip you down with their sights when they hear the remembrance and they say, truly he is surely a madman. So that's a very uh, descriptive way Allah is explaining it. Nearly trip you with their sight. I mean, I don't know if you've encountered this, but people will look at you as if they, <laughs> they want you to. I don't know, and you no one has experienced this. They have, can have this look in their eye. You know, they might be smiling at you, but really they just want you to fall in front of them. I think we've experienced that. And Allah says, that's arrogance, right? That arrogant look. When they hear the remembrance, the absarim, wa in yakadu ladina kafaru la yuzlikunaka bi absarim lama sami'u dhikr. When they hear the, the remembrance. Mm. Because what is all of this? All of this is a reminder. Every single thing the Prophet is saying is nothing new. It's nothing new. It's everything, each one of you, myself included, all of us knew this. It is completely known. This is what is known. If we could only remember the time when we were with Allah, in the garden and all of this is known so all of the prophets all of that they're teaching all the quran is nothing new all they're doing is reminding and when you remind say, oh this is a crazy person talking about previous life huh? and a ruh that doesn't age and a life to come because you can't remember if you remember you'll be like okay I remember. So may Allah grant that we all people who remember, then life here becomes very easy. And Allah says, وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرُ لِلْعَالَمِينَ He says, even this is nothing but وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرُ لِلْعَالَمِينَ It's nothing but a remembrance for the world. So may we all remember. So this is Surat column by the pen so we finished and it's very interesting it comes from noon which is um, it's linked to Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam which is linked to the city of Mecca uh, that's a bit too much to go into now today but it is also linked into uh, Sayyidatina Hajra who is the founder of the city of Mecca uh, Hajar, her mother, may I please speak on her. Mm. And Mecca itself, there's a. Mm, it's not. Uh, 
this is close to Arafat and Arafat is a plane that uh, has has meaning in the mulk and the malikut so we'll stop there but see that's a bit much so I think we can say we've finished uh, yeah we have finished this ayah وَجَعَلْ بِسَادٍ وَبِقَافٍ وَبِنُونَ أَلْفَ حِجَابٍ مِنْ وَرَائِهَا يَكُونَ So he says by sad and qaf and noon. So these words are not said just because they're poetic. All these meanings are being drawn back. So again, Surah Qalam is a surah of Tawbah. No? Going back to Allah. Now, place a thousand veils in front of it. And why is he saying this? Place a thousand veils in front of it. Because these meanings that we have spoken of and we remind ourselves of, they're very precious. Very precious. Allah Azza does not give what is precious to be wasted. So whenever Allah gives you something that is precious, meaning some enlightenment, you keep it carefully. Don't just squander it. Hmm? Don't expose yourself until Allah says it is time. Then it is safe. And the more Allah gives you and the more you don't honor those gifts, the more he will give it to someone who does. And hence the state of the Muslim Ummah today. He will give. The most precious thing we have is our remembrance of where we came from. He will give that to those people who honor it. So may Allah make us of those who honor it. And may Allah increase our zikr. So we remember where we came from. So when we go back, it won't be like we've been too, too much away. So any questions? What zikr do you recommend? Um, Is it question? What zikr? She's telling what zikr in remembrance of God. So, any particular zikr? Barakallah. Barakallah. Jazakallah khair. The zikr of Dhul Noon, or the companion of the fish. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zwalimin. Very powerful, immensely powerful zikr. It can unlock many things and rectify states that you cannot believe the hardship you'll be in, but it will rectify it. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zwalimin. Uh, made in big numbers and we must increase our zikr you know we must be people of constant zikr Allah says zikr all the time that don't cease actually mashallah it's good you brought that question up because I had this ayah from Surat Saad I wanted I forgot to uh, talk about last week uh, and I wanted to this week and I forgot and subhanallah uh, Surat Sa'ad. Uh, wait, let me. Then, uh, this is in when we were talking about all paired. Surat Sa'ad is uh, Surat, uh, Surat 38. Uh, was it Surat? No, I think it was Surat Qaf. Yeah, Allah Azza talks about the fire. I think it's Qaf. And Allah says, No, sorry, Surat Qaf, Ayah 30, uh, Surat 50, the 50th Surah, Ayah 30. We, uh, because the other dhikr that one should say all the time is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. That dhikr has profound profound mystical value bismillah rahman rahim you say it all the time these two i recommend la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin bismillah rahman rahim because um, one of the quality of the basmala is that it controls fire and there are so that is from the quran inshallah we'll come to that later but in ayah 30 of Surah 50, Allah says, uh, you know, uh, taqulu li jahannama halim, tal halim tala'ati wa taqulu hal min ma mazid. A day when we shall say to the hellfire, are you full? 
And what will it say? Is there any more? Subhanallah. So this is one of the qualities of fire. Even here, fire, the more you feed it, the bigger it grows. Correct? Right? The more you put fuel to fire, the bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger it grows. So your nafs, your self, your ego is like a fire. The more you feed your ego, the bigger it's going to grow. I say, I want to achieve such and such for my ego, not for Allah. I achieved it. Now I want to achieve more. I want this much power. I want more. True or false? I want this much wealth. I want more. So we call that the fire. Uh, and this is where Allah teaches us about the fire of the self. Is there any more? The hellfire is the same. It's the quality of fire. So Basmala can control fire. So this is why it's... particular number? How many times or anything? I can tell you that maybe okay. later because this is... Okay. Inshallah, I'll, I'll answer. Anything else? So we should, we should, we should finish. So we'll make uh, the dua of greeting. This dua one of the connections it has is to the Hadith Qudsi where Allah Azza says of those things I love, the most beloved to me are what I have made obligatory upon the slayer, the, the tribe of Adam, which is the, the, the pillars of Islam, the praying, the fasting, all of that. After that is the extra acts of devotion, right? The extra prayers, fasts, all of that. And it says, until I love these things, until there comes a time some one of my slaves will do it so much, until I love him. And when I love him, I say to Jibrail, here is so and so, love him also. And Jibrail says to all the malaika, here is so and so, love that person also. Right? And Allah then says, I become uh, the hand with which he strikes, the foot with which he walks, the tongue with which he speaks. And he goes on, it's a beautiful beautiful hadith um, so Allah says if I so when, when Allah has greeted you assalamu alaykum so and so assalamu alaykum so and so okay huh? subhanallah because that means Allah's love is upon you so we are we pray that Allah uh, grants us a personal greeting and so we make this dua so this one is in English inshallah thank you we begin in the name of the only, the one, the absolute, the all, the one who sustains but is not sustained, the one who creates but is not created, the one who is the origin of all, the all-powerful in front of whom there is no other power, the all-able in front of whom there is no other ability, the all-seeing, the all-hearing, the watchful over the meeting of the near, the sublime, the apparent, the hidden, the only reality, truth transcendent, truth apparent, truth manifest, truth that mm. cannot be denied, Truth known even if unacknowledged, truth that pours out of acknowledgement, the reality of all. The true state of being and all else is mirage, and the true state of existence and all else is fancy. The beloved of all who believe, the saviour of all who are saved, the guide of all those who wander, the one from whom we came, the one we return to, the one to whom we belong. Our true breath that gives us life, our God, the eternal everlasting one, we raise our hands to you and we implore. We implore and raise the mention of your beloved, our liege lord, our saviour, our master, our guide, the perfected one, the chosen one, the one whose true essence only you comprehend, your haq, the one whose light only you can truly see, your nur, the one whose mercy is the breath of your divine mercy, your rahman, the seal of the noble body of prophets, the leader of the noble messengers, 
the foremost knower of you, the greatest one among those conscious of you, the beloved of you and our beloved. So mm. send upon him his noble family, his blessed companions, his friends and brethren, all those who love and obey and follow him to all time. Send your special blessings, salutations, peace and noblest greetings upon your life. And let your greeting upon us, O our Lord, be the seed of your mercy, the emblem of your protection, the guard and the armor, the ennobling robes of light, the clothes adorn and distinguishes us upon the earth in the grave and in our resurrection, the light that carries us through the prodigious swift is lightning and the light with which you are pleased and you are beautiful. So we may present ourselves to you, O our Lord, without shame, but in modesty, and by the light and strength and blessing of your greeting, O our Lord, we may be there, we may be there to be in your majestic and beautiful presence, O our Lord. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, we ask that you open every door of nearness to you. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, keep us safe from loss, from grief, from wastefulness, from filth, from impure relations, and from fear. We fear only you, O our Lord, and Allah hope is in you. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, remove the veils that bind us, that blind us from the light and strength and protection of truth. For knowing truth is truth, and falsehood is falsehood. And O Allah, by the light of this greeting, give us the ability to stay away from what is false and enable us to advance in what is good. Allahumma bi nuri salamata tarfa'ana. Allah bi nuri salamata tarfa'ana. Allah bi nuri salamata tarfa'ana. O Allah, by the light of your greeting, cause the ascension of our prayer. Amen. And join us, O our Lord, as long as we remain here in the dunya in our time in the barzakh, and after that, to the companionship by which all our loneliness is banished and by which we are gladdened with those who have sent and established your eternal greeting upon the most noble elevated company. No.